Hello everyone. Welcome to the mechanics class. Uh, in the last session, what we have studied is uh, uh, we understood the concept of uh, fixed axis rotation. Okay, uh, we understood what is angular displacement and uh, what is linear displacement. Then what is the angular velocity? What is angular acceleration? Okay, and uh, we also understood the two components of acceleration that is tangential and normal acceleration, right? And uh, what is tangential acceleration? Tangential acceleration is uh, coming from the magnitude, changing the magnitude of the velocity, and angular acceleration is generated because of the change in the direction of the velocity. Okay, and we have proved the total acceleration is equal to under root of sum of squares of tangential and normal acceleration right uh, we did this derivation and then we solved a couple of problems on it okay and before studying this what i have uh, explained i have given some problems to you on um, let's say the variable acceleration constant acceleration problem then acceleration due to gravity problem right so what are your problems we have start uh, we have studied in the previous class okay in today's session um, we will continue this fixed axis rotation we'll solve some more problems okay and then uh, i'll i'll start the kinetics part okay uh, but before jumping into the new questions one question i have given you in the previous session I hope some of you have solved it, but some of as some of you have not. I will help you with the solution. Okay. So, what was the question? Uh, the question was like uh, the end of a rod. Okay, <coughs> rod, which is let's say um, the end is a has rightward component of velocity two meters per second. So, let me draw the figure. Okay, so this is the rod uh, we have, and this is the end day of the rod. This is the end day of the rod, okay. Um, and this is the x-axis, this is y-axis. And now, um, let's uh, what they have given is the rightward component of velocity is two meters per second so this is two meters per second what is the value of this vx and the upper component of the acceleration is four meter per second square so they have also given the value of ay okay this is given the angular acceleration of the rod at the position and what they are asking is angular acceleration what is the position of the rod uh, this is they have given as three four and length of the rod is 10 meters okay so this is the given data so if this is 10 what should be the total height this total height should be uh, 6 and this should be 8, right? Then only uh, sum of, let's say, squares of, diago uh, squares of sides equal to the mm, diagonal, square of the diagonal. Okay, 8 square plus 6 square is 10 square, Pythagoras theorem. So what we have to calculate from this is the angular acceleration. So let's try to solve this question in detail. Um, so, as it is fixed axis rotation, uh, perpendicular, let's say, let me try to draw the velocity direction. So, velocity will be in something in this direction. Okay. So, this is the direction of velocity. Okay. 
this is theta. For this line, this is the perpendicular. And uh, for then, um, okay. Um, for horizontal line, this is a perpendicular, and for this line, this is a perpendicular. So this also has to be theta, and this also has to be theta. So what I can say is Vx is what? Vx is, uh, you can say, either you can say it as uh, V cos of, V sine of theta, you can say, or V cos of 90 minus theta. Because if this is theta, this is 90 minus theta, right? So V cos of, 90 minus theta you can say right i hope you understood this is 90 minus theta <coughs> now so uh, we got vx and uh, yeah they have also given an upper uh, uh, upward component of the acceleration they have given right so the value of the 80 will be somewhere in this direction, right? 80. And uh, yeah. And uh, the AN will be somewhere here, normal acceleration. And let me use a red pen here or some green pen. Again. Okay, and this is again theta, you know. So the horizontal component of it will be a n cos of theta. A n x is equal to a n cos of theta, right? Yeah, and uh, the vertical component of a n is a n y, and that is a n sine of theta. Okay, so now more or less figure is clear. Mm. We have figure is complete. We can say uh, all the things we have almost written. So what is an normal acceleration? Uh, okay, before jumping to the an, let's calculate this. What is the value of vx? Vx is two, which is given to us. So two is equal to v. You can write it as a v sine theta also because cos ninety minus theta is sine theta, right? And what is sine theta? Sine theta is perpendicular divided by hypotenuse. So that is 6 divided by 10. Or you can write it as 3 by 5. V into 3 by 5. So this implies V is equal to 10 by 3. So it is 3.33 meters per second. Okay. So this is the use of Vx uh, in order to calculate the velocity. If velocity is known, angular acceleration, uh, sorry the normal acceleration we can calculate that is v square by r so it is 3.333 whole square divided by r r is uh, 10 in this case that is 1.11 meters per second okay so this is our en and uh, en y is what An will have two components, Anx and Any. Okay. And uh, Any will be Any will be An sine of theta, which we have already written here in the figure. And that will be again 1.11 into 3 by 5. That is 3.33 divided by 5, which is 0 0.66 meter per second square. Okay. So that's how we calculate E and Y. Similarly, the AT will have two components. AT, uh, let me use some maybe purple pen here. Uh, AT, AT Y and AT X. Okay. Okay. Two components of AT, AT Y and AT X. What is the component of AT Y? Um, Vertical component of AT is ATY. And that is equal to AT cos of theta. Right? 
<laughs> and uh, cos theta we already know that is base divided by hypotenuse so 8 by 10 or 4 by 5 so 80 multiply by 4 by 5 okay uh, or you can say 0.8 times 80 so 80 y is 0.8 times 80 So there are total two accelerations which are along the vertical, let's say along the y axis, that is ATY and ANY. ATY is upward, ANY is downward. So AY, that is upward compared of the acceleration is ATY minus ANY. Do you agree? And uh, what is AY? That is they have given as 4 meter per second square. And this has to be equal to ATY is 0.8 times AT minus a n y is 0 0.66 meters per second square so from this you will get the value of 80 what will be it um, this implies 80 will be equal to 4.66 divided by 0 0.8 okay and uh, that is 5.83 meter per second square okay 5.83 meter per second square so we got the 80 but we know 80 is what ah uh, 80 is uh, r times alpha r times alpha and which is what is the value of r r is 10 times alpha so this implies alpha is equal to 5.83 divided by 10 that will be 0 0.5 okay yes <coughs> okay is it clear to you all anyone have any doubt in this question now i hope uh, all of you understood the this problem how to solve it let me know if you have any questions Okay, uh, Surjana, I will repeat once again, no problem. Okay, uh, listen carefully. So what they have given is two things. One is Vx, that is horizontal component of the acceleration is two meter per, uh, sorry, horizontal component of the velocity is given, that is two meters per second, and a vertical component of the acceleration is four meter per second. Okay, so these are the two things which are given to us. And they have also given the length of the rod, the slope at which rod is um, uh, kept, okay, with respect to the horizontal. So now, how to calculate this V from Vx? Vx velocity we know is going downward. Why? If rightward component is here, the velocity direction has to be in this direction, right? It cannot be in this direction. If velocity is in this direction, let's say along AT in this case, then the horizontal component will be in the left hand side direction, right? In this, in this. But that is not the case. They have given rightward component. They have mentioned clearly rightward component. So the velocity direction has to be downward. Okay. So this is the first point. So the V V will have two components. One is V Vx and Vy. Vx will be 2 meters per second. And what is Vx? Vx is equal to V cos of 90 minus theta. Or you can call it as a V sine theta because this is theta. So the horizontal component of the V will be V sine of theta. And sine theta is 3 by 5. And that's how we calculate the value of V here. Okay. So 2 which is horizontal component of the velocity is already given. And we made use of it to calculate the velocity. If we know the velocity, we can calculate the normal acceleration. What is normal acceleration? V square by R. So 3.33 square by 10 will give you the value of normal acceleration. Uh, why we are calculating normal acceleration? Because they have given us the upward component of the acceleration. So 
there are two upward components of the accelerations. Okay, one is hty and any so and both are in opposite direction. So their subtraction is equal to the acceleration component in the y direction, right, which is given to us. So we know an is always directing towards center. So this is the correct value of or correct direction for the an and an y will be acting downward. So an y will be is equal to an sine of theta an we just calculated that is 1.11 into sine of theta is again 3 by 5 you will get 0.66 so you got the value of a and y now it's time to calculate ATY. okay so now ATY is what at cos of theta at cos theta cos theta is 4 by 5 so that is 0 0.8 times 80 so a y is given to us that is 4 meter per second square and that has to be equal to subtraction of ATY and ANY, right? Because the total component of the acceleration in vertically upward direction they have mentioned as 4 meter per second square. Okay, the component of the acceleration, the upward component of the acceleration is 4 meter per second square. What is that? It is a let's say a summation of vertical acceleration or summation of acceleration along the y axis. So one acceleration is going upward, one is going downward. So that is why AT, AY is equal to ATY minus ANY. Okay. And AY is 4. ATY we just calculated 0 0.880. And uh, ANY we just calculated that is 0 0.66. This 0 0.66 goes here. That is 4.66 divided by 0.8 gives you 5.83 value of the AT. That is tangential acceleration. And what is tangential acceleration? r times alpha and what is alpha angular acceleration that is what required here as a solution so at is equal to 5.83 which is r times alpha so alpha will be equal to 5.83 divided by r the value of r is 10 so 5.83 divided by 10 is 0 0.583 okay so that's how we have calculated it <coughs> is it clear Sujana? any doubt Okay, good. So uh, this is one question. Maybe um, I'll give one question to you one more for homework. You can try this. And if you still, let's say, unable to solve it, then maybe in the next session, I can help you. The velocity of a particle is defined by Vx is equal to 100 minus T raised to power 3 by 2 Vy is equal to 100 plus 10t minus 2t square. Okay. Where V is in meters per second and T is in second. The radius of curvature at top of its path is <coughs> okay. Uh, I'll repeat the question. The velocity of a particle is defined by Vx. Vx is 100 minus t raised to the power 3 by 2. Vy is 100 plus 10t minus 2t square, where V is in meters per second and t is in second. Okay, the radius of curvature at top of its path is. Okay. Uh, so basically, they are asking for radius of curvature, maximum radius of curvature. Okay, suppose this is the curve, for example then this is the what they are asking okay uh, vx and vy is given to you uh, maybe think on in this question and um, try to solve it final answer here is 155 
0.86 meters okay you should get it and if you still find any difficulty um, maybe i can send you the solution or you can discuss it in the next class okay Let me give you another question, which we'll solve now on the same fixed axis rotation. The particle is thrown The questions which I am giving to you for homework are like little tricky. okay, you have to spend some time on it. That is the main intention behind it, okay. Uh, if you spend some time try to and uh, solve it on your own then like you understood the topic completely right so that is the overall intention in case you are not able to solve i can help you okay but you should try on your own first a particle is thrown up in the air with a velocity of Uh, let's say 100 meters per second making an angle of 60 degree uh, with horizontal determine the radius of curvature Determine the radius of curvature at the at let's say time t is equal to one second. Time t is equal to one second. Okay, very uh, simple question. A particle is thrown up in the air with a velocity of uh, hundred meters per second making an angle 60 degree with the horizontal and initial velocity is 100 meters per second okay determine the radius of curvature at time t is equal to one second Okay, solve it. Determine the radius of curvature at time t is equal to one second. See, <clears throat> as of now, the particle is making 60 degree with the horizontal and it is at 100 meters per second. But we are working against the gravity. So maybe uh, after one second, the velocity will be a little less um, and the angle will be a little different, right? So that is what uh, we should be first focusing on. And at that situation, then we can calculate the uh, radius of curvature, right? So let's uh, try to understand it um, so let's say after one second maybe particle is somewhere here right and let's say this is the direction of velocity and uh, vx 
is v by and here the angle will be something different maybe alpha okay uh, here the tangential component of the acceleration may still like this normal acceleration is perpendicular it's somewhere like this okay and um, so this is just to explain how uh, the figure will look like after one second so v not y you know that is uh, 100 cos of 60 and v 100 sine of 60 and v not x is 100 cos of 6 and uh, so how will you calculate the v1 x v1 x will be same that is 100 cos of 60 and that is uh, 50 meters per second what about the v1 y v1 y is equal to u minus 80 u minus gt so it's a v naught y minus g times t so it's 100 sine 60 minus 9.81 into 1 okay so it is 76.79 meters per second okay so this is v1 y we got the value of v1 x we got the value of v1 y and now we we can calculate under root of v1 x plus v1 y 50 square plus 76 point 79 whole square that is 91.6 meter per second okay so we got the value of v what will be the value of tan of alpha that time uh, and that will be vy by vx right uh, that is so this implies uh, theta is equal to tan inverse of 76.79 divided by 50 it is 56.9 okay uh, no Abhishek uh, something wrong with your answer please check once again okay so what is the value of an here normal component of the acceleration we know is v square by r or you can say r omega square also whichever you want so from this r can be written as um, v square by an okay v square by an so you know the value of v you know you should know the value of an in order to get the radius of curvature how to find a n that is the main question okay so uh, here the a n will have two components okay uh, maybe mm, what i can say uh, total let's say uh, Uh, let's say <coughs> for example in this case um, what is cos of alpha let me show you what again alpha will look like here or this, this is the perpendicular I think this also has to be alpha okay so sorry alpha because um, for a n that is the perpendicular yeah so uh, okay uh, what we know is what is the component of the acceleration what is the downward component of the acceleration and that is nothing but the uh, acceleration due to gravity that is 9.81 do you agree uh, because 
that's we are working against gravity so the acceleration the comfort of the acceleration um, here in this case is um, we can say uh, the downward component of the acceleration in this case will be um, 9.81 that is acceleration due to gravity that is g you can say okay so i can say that um, cos of alpha you can write it as uh, maybe um, let me uh, yeah you can write it as a divided by an okay and the value of a here is uh, 9.8 or g divided by an rather uh, g is 9.81 divided by cos of 56.9 okay and the value which you'll get here is um, maybe uh, sorry no uh, keep it as it is and from this you calculate rather an an is equal to g divided by cos of alpha let me go to the next page and uh, 9.81 divided by cos of 56.9 i think you will get 5.36 something <clears throat> and now uh, you know uh, an is v square by r and uh, this implies r is equal to v square by an so can you go to previous slide yeah in just a minute 91.6 square divided by 5.36 calculate and tell me the answer yeah i don't have final answer for this but the number should be a little bigger i expect the tangential component will not affect the vertical uh, acceleration the kt cos at sin alpha uh, is equals to plus um, minus an uh, cos alpha is equal to g Ah, uh, okay. <coughs> yeah, ATV have there, right? Um, mm. See, mm. uh, okay, um. AT, uh, uh, no, I think here uh, it should not come because um, um, we are working on uh, acceleration uh, not because of the um, change in direction, only because of the change in direction okay so i think in this case only a n should come okay uh, if say uh, because we are not uh, calculating the total acceleration a okay uh, here i am not assuming like total acceleration a is equal to um, uh, let's say some total acceleration and then uh, in that case yeah we may have to take both uh, at and en but this is uh, like um, working uh, against the gra gravity so in this situation uh, we we should take only an but sir both components are affected with gravity uh, horizontal component is zero like acceleration a n plus at is sine at sine alpha at cos alpha and a n sine alpha will be zero additional thing you can go straight with that and find the a n from that equation so. uh, see let me explain you a, it will not be zero horizontal comp uh, so okay let me explain you um uh, so what is the situation here yeah we got 80 here uh, 
which is making an angle alpha right so at cos of alpha and i think somewhere like this we have an yeah um making an alpha and uh, yeah the component of it is again en um yeah maybe yeah sine alpha you can say <coughs> okay uh, yeah okay yeah and uh, yeah two component vertically um yes it is at sine of alpha and here yes at um sorry an cos of alpha yeah i think this is right um you should uh what you can do is you can you will take a make one relationship here um that is at cos of alpha is equal to um what you can say um minus an sine of alpha okay you will get one relationship here right and another equation what you will get here is um, at sine of alpha minus en cos of alpha is equal to 9.81 okay so uh, from these two calculate the value of at and an and put it here not this one okay so get the value of an here and uh, then equate it to v square by r yes you should have this part yeah and uh, then tell me the value of r here so uh, after solving these two equations what is the value of at and an um anyone uh can you tell me an what is at and an alpha value you already have right what is alpha alpha is equal to 56.9 <coughs> so just put it here and get tell me the value of et and an so maybe hmm, help you out et will be equal to Okay, Pranjul, what is this? Uh, this that is value of 80, 5.3? An value, sir. An value 5.3. An is 5.3, okay. And what is 80? Just to make sure this satisfying the equation. Sir, 8.13, sir. 8.13, okay. Uh, others are also getting the same answer. Just check it uh, since I have not calculated it. You can just confirm others. You can put into these equations and check whether um, these two are satisfying these two equations or not. Okay, then uh, in the meantime, yeah, if it is correct, then 5.3 should be equal to um, V square by R and R is equal to An by V square. Um, so uh, then you can just um, calculate it. An is 5.3, 5.3 uh, divided by V is uh, 91.6 square. How much how much you are getting r
Who is this? Pranjul or Abhishek? Hello? Yes. Yeah, uh, how much? You can post the answers quickly. Okay, Shrujana got 17.13. Uh, Abhishek got 17.09. Uh, so everyone is getting different answers here. Um, can you solve these two questions and uh, tell me the value of AT and AN? Is, is it correct or not? Um, Abhishek, uh, Deepa, Shri and uh, Sujana, are you also getting the same answers or different? Okay. Okay, then maybe you can solve it uh, and uh, but yeah, uh, you can solve it. I don't have the values here. Um, you can solve it, but ultimately this is the overall idea. Okay, um, so I'll repeat the question what they have asked here. So this particle was thrown here after one second. What we did is we calculated the velocity. Okay, velocity will be the direction of the velocity is now different because initially it is making a 60 degree angle angle will slightly reduce okay and velocity will also reduce because we are working against gravity so velocity now became 91.6 from 100 meters per second okay also the angle is reduced from 60 degree to the 56.9 degree after just one second so at this location okay uh, as let's say we have thrown the particle upward um, uh, the value of uh, velocity is perpendicular to the or sorry tangent to the curve along that we have tangential component of the acceleration and uh, yeah and uh, then we have normal component of the acceleration acting towards the center okay and then we have yes uh, vy and vx yeah just tell me just one correction here. Can you tell me whether this AT value is correct or not? Or AT direction correct or not? What is AT? AT is generated because of change in magnitude of the velocity. So uh, here, here what is the, uh, let's say, Direction, whether I have the direction which I have shown is correct or uh, it is wrong. Hello? Can you tell me the direction which I have drawn here is correct or wrong? Why it is correct, Pranjal? Well, it is a tangential acceleration, so it will be wrong. Yes. To the yeah, so, but it is upward or downward? It should be downward, right? What is acceleration? Change in the velocity with respect to time, right? Whether our velocity is increasing or decreasing with respect to time. Decreasing, sir. Yeah, yeah. So that just make that correct. Uh, equation is some negative, sir. Well, yeah. So uh, you just have to. Uh, uh, what you have to do is let me let me just tell you at this point itself. Um, by red pen, I'll just change the direction. Okay. Um, okay. This like this. Uh, again, stuff will remain same. Nothing will change um, in this slide at least. Everything will remain as it is. And uh, in the next side, AT is equal to plus E and sine of um, AT will be in this direction. So AT will be equal to AT. <coughs> is 
ಸ್ವಲ್ಪ ದಿಸ್ ಸ್ವಲ್ಪ ಕಾಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಅಲ್ಫಾ ಓಕೆ ಸೊ ಎ ಟಿ ಕಾಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಅಲ್ಫಾ ಇಸ್ ಈಕ್ವಲ್ ಟು ಎ ಎನ್ ಸೈನ್ ಆಫ್ ಅಲ್ಫಾ ಸೊ ಬೇಸಿಕಲಿ ಯು ವಿಲ್ ಗೆಟ್ ಎ ಟಿ ಇಸ್ ಈಕ್ವಲ್ ಟು ಎ ಎನ್ ಟೈಮ್ಸ್ ಕಾಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಅಲ್ಫಾ ಅದು ವಾಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಅಲ್ಫಾ ವ್ಯಾಲ್ಯೂ ಫಿಫ್ಟಿ ಸಿಕ್ಸ್ ಪಾಯಿಂಟ್ ನೈನ್ ಓಕೆ ಪುಟ್ ದಿಸ್ ವ್ಯಾಲ್ಯೂ ಆಫ್ ಎ ಟಿ ಇನ್ ಟು ದ ಬಿಲೋ ಇಕ್ವೇಷನ್ ವಾಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಬಿಲೋ ಇಕ್ವೇಷನ್ ನಾವು ಎ ಎನ್ ಕಾಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಅಲ್ಫಾ ಪ್ಲಸ್ ಎ ಟಿ ಸೈನ್ ಆಫ್ ಅಲ್ಫಾ ಇಸ್ ಈಕ್ವಲ್ ಟು ನೈನ್ ಪಾಯಿಂಟ್ ಏಟ್ ಒನ್ ಓಕೆ ಸೊ ನಾವು ದಿಸ್ ಇಸ್ ಮೋರ್ ಕರೆಕ್ಟ್ ಸೊ ಜಸ್ಟ್ ಪುಟ್ ಇಟ್ ಹಿಯರ್ ಎ ಟಿ ವ್ಯಾಲ್ಯೂ ಇ ಎನ್ ಪಾಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಫಿಫ್ಟಿ ಸಿಕ್ಸ್ ಪಾಯಿಂಟ್ ನೈನ್ ಪ್ಲಸ್ ಇ ಎನ್ ಕಾಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಫಿಫ್ಟಿ ಸಿಕ್ಸ್ ಪಾಯಿಂಟ್ ನೈನ್ ಇಸ್ ಈಕ್ವಲ್ ಟು ನೈನ್ ಪಾಯಿಂಟ್ ಏಟಿ ಒನ್ ಫ್ರಾಮ್ ದಿಸ್ ಟೆಲ್ ಮಿ ದ ವ್ಯಾಲ್ಯೂ ಆಫ್ ಎ ಎನ್ ಫ್ರಾಮ್ ದಿಸ್ ಟೆಲ್ ಮಿ ದ ವ್ಯಾಲ್ಯೂ ಆಫ್ ಎ ಎನ್ ಕ್ವಿಕ್ಲಿ what is the answer sir a t will be an sin al a n tan alpha tan which is 0.9 yeah tan right yes sir it is equal to sir here a n tan which is 0.9 into uh, sir a n is correct sin alpha only a t sin alpha yes because sin of theta divided by cos of theta is tan of theta so it should be equal to an <coughs> tan of 56.9 so just put it here uh, at um yeah tan of alpha so sin of, of alpha yeah. Sin, yeah, sin yeah so just this is just the value of at so from this tell me the value of an tell me the value of an i don't have calculator with me tell me the value of an so same comes 5.3 only 5.3 you are getting okay so you will get a n is equal to 5.3 and then uh, yeah from that um just calculated the value of r 5.3 divided by 91.6 yeah ಹ <coughs> 
sir hello ah uh, yes excuse me sir uh, it's it should be uh, here uh, an in, an tan 56.9 into sin al sin 6.9 yes, sir that means so tan yeah, alpha into sin alpha sir yeah i have written it right yeah, okay okay, okay. Uh -huh. How much final answer? Um, okay, just do this division and write the answer then. If you are not telling me. Uh, okay, uh, something maybe zero point something. Zero point zero six, maybe something. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Okay. Any, anyone have any doubt? Hello. Yes. So here it should be. Uh, can you go to the next slide, sir? Yeah. So here it should be v square upon r is equal to a n, sir. Yes. No, sir. Here, here, uh, below this one, sir. Here it is r is equal to. Yeah. Okay. Square it. So tell no, me sir, the answer. Uh, no, sir, it's here it's reciprocal, sorry. In uh, V square script should be uh Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, so what we uh, we inter we are interested in R, right? So it's V square by A N. And yes, thank you. Uh, v square here is uh, how much? Ninety one point six whole square divided by A N is five point three. Is it correct now? Yeah, I think it should be correct now. Uh, let me just calculate in my cal uh, mobile. 91.6 into 90. <clears throat> yeah, 15 something. Okay. Yes, right. Um, 1583 something. Yeah, now it makes more sense for the answer because... Uh, uh, if we are throwing something, some particle which is making a 60 degree angle with horizontal with some 100 meter uh, per second velocity, then at least it will have some significant number of, um, let's say, radius of curvature, um, not not the very small number. Okay, because uh, that will that particle will be at very uh, at certain height okay so let me repeat this question uh, as we have can do did some corrections here okay so particle is thrown off in the air with a velocity of 100 meters per second making an angle 60 degree with the horizontal determine the radius of curvature uh, at the time one second as we are working against gravity initially velocity is 100 meters per second later it became 91.6 after one second right we just calculated so during this one second changing the velocity is um, negative it means it's a deceleration so that is the reason at direction should be downward okay n is always uh, towards the center okay and at this location we have also calculated the alpha value that is vy by vx and that is 56.9 in order to calculate the radius of curvature, we should calculate the an because an is equal to v square by r and r is equal to v square by an. Okay, so we get, we got the v square that is 91.6 square, but an is unknown. So let's calculate an now. We know that downward component of the acceleration is 9.81. So total vertical component is uh, the vertical component of the at that is um, at. Uh, sine of alpha okay and uh, 
a n cos of alpha the sum of these two should be equal to 9.81 okay and uh, <coughs> one more relationship which we can use is this uh, which gives us the um, the value of uh, let's say an an is equal to 5.3 okay and r is equal to v square by an so we we just have calculated 91.6 whole square divided by an which is 5.3 gives us 15.83 okay so just make sure uh, we corrected here the direction of at it is downward and that is why we have re removed this negative sign okay Go through this question once again uh, whenever uh, you have some free time Hello. as we have did some correction. Yes. Hello. Yes, yes. Steam, sir. Yeah. Sir, uh, I, I was doing with some different with uh, doing using mathematics like sir. Uh, I converted yeah. the uh, equation in x xy form, sir. And then I differentiate okay. uh, I use a for then I differentiate dy by d I, I count dy by dx and or d2 y by dx square and then i use i use the formula r is equal to 1 plus d2, dy by dx whole square or uh, to the power 3 by 2 uh, upon by d2 d2 to y y upon dx square sir can you use this one sir there is a formula for radius of curvature no, sir. yeah yeah okay already you try to use the radius of curvature formula uh, yes, okay sir. yeah uh, <clears throat> i don't remember the exact formula but uh, what is that formula can you tell me Yes, sir. Uh, that is sir one plus dy by dx whole square. Uh -huh. That's all. Uh, divided by yes, divided by uh, d d two uh, d two d two y upon dx. Yes, sir. Okay, this one. Uh, just let me check. And, and sir, uh, there's so there should be three by two, no? three to the power two, sir. Uh, where upper side, sir. Upper side, sir. D it's one plus d by no, dx. No, sir. It, it should be two, sir. Uh, the whole power should be three by two. Okay. Um. Yeah. Uh, yes, okay. So you have created a equation for the um, curve. Yes. Okay. Yes, sir. And then uh, you calculated the radius yes. of curvature at that particular instant. Yeah. So. Uh, yes, how you calculated the uh, equation of curve here just by uh, like uh, those two points y is equal to, yes. y is equal to u2 uh, u y is equal to uh -huh. ui t y is equal to u y y component of u t yes okay uh -huh. okay okay uh, no sir, uh, u, uh, y is equal to so y is equal to Yes, sir. V, uh, vy, vy uh -huh. minus me half gt square, vy minus me half gt square. Okay. Mm -hmm. Vyt, 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 sir. Okay, you. Uh, okay, vyt minus half of gt square. Minus half gt. Uh huh. And then uh, there is another equation, sir. Uh, you, uh, x is equal to my y, vx into my t, sir. I derive the derive the t. Uh, okay, so this is your vy and this is your vy vx, and uh, no sir, no sir, it's it's y only sir, not a vy. Ah, uh, okay, okay, fine. And x is equal to vx times yes, t. Infinity. Okay. I I derive the t here, sir, and put into this okay. one. Okay. And I got the equation y y in the term of x. Ah, uh, okay. So uh, how the okay? So basically, um yeah i understood your point what you have done here is so this is the how velocity is changing with respect to y direction yes so this is yes. v y you can say and this is let's say v not y mine v no, not sir, y it's t. A, it's so it's a y no, sir. uh x is y uh, how will you calculate the v y v1 y can you tell me how you calculate v1 y no sir uh v not y. V1, it's not so yeah okay yes yes, uh, yes 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 okay understood understood so this is your s right okay just y okay. yes sir yes sir, vertical y. vertical this height right right mm -hmm. yes sir yes sir uh, and in this uh, we, method uh, we, uh, what we, answer you are getting 
so i was i was it, it getting sir too, too complex sir. i was okay, getting around uh, of this one sir this one around of this one it, also. yeah then i think yeah i think it, this is also uh, looks correct method i don't uh, uh, like think it's wrong because uh, what you are doing here is um, how x is changing with respect to um, time yes. uh, and uh, yes sir how why is uh, why displacement is changing with respect to time okay yes, um, looks correct uh, uh, i totally so, derive uh, derive a y into the in term, of, in term of x sir and then i found the derivative okay so what dy by dx is equal to dy by dt and then I you multiply maybe dt by dx right yes sir yes sir mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, or maybe divide with a dx by dt, rather. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so uh, yeah, so then you should get a relationship between um, uh, y and x. So you you yes. get dy by dx equal to some equation in terms of y and x, and then maybe by variable separable. You yes. can get the relationship yes, between y and x. Okay, good. Yes, uh, y as a function of x, right? Yes, and sir. then um, uh, I double differentiated. Uh, okay, and then you applied this formula. Yes, sir. Yeah. Uh, yes. Sir. Yeah, I think this should also be correct. Uh, <laughs> and, I'm getting uh, around of fifteen hundred, fifteen hundred. Something, yeah, yeah, 15, uh, 15, 70 or something is the answer, right? What we got, um, 15, 83. Um, is it correct? Just uh, confirm, maybe one has uh, because I have not used uh, calculator here. Let me. or this uh, exact figures, the exact numbers, if you don't use, then if your answer is around it, then I, sh I don't think it's um, uh, wrong. Your method is also correct. Um, looks, at least from the point, it looks correct because you generated this curve and then um, found out the radius of curvature R. Okay. Uh, so process wise, I don't think like, uh, it is uh, wrong, uh, but maybe a little time consuming than what uh, we have explained before, because uh, here, uh, yeah, actually I was not aware of this formula. Yeah, maybe um, I don't remember it, but yeah, it's good that you remember and uh, uh, you, we can apply here, but uh, just a little bit more complex here. Um, um, finding the divide by dx and then integrating it getting y and then again differentiating it uh, yeah but yeah this this method is also correct and uh, it's good that you are getting similar answer what's your good name Abhishek Arya. yeah okay okay good yeah uh, Okay, uh, I'll give you one more question. Uh, let me give you one different kind of question now. Um, yep. Position vector. R bar is equal to phi um, ti plus 3t square j plus t cube by 3k okay um, where r is in meter and t is in second r is in meter and t is in second At the instant, when t is equal to 2 seconds, the radius of curvature is. Okay. 
okay um, question is more or less similar to what we have um, studied before slight change is there okay uh, because uh, there i have clearly given you the value of velocity and uh, uh, initial velocity and angle with which we are throwing it here it is a little bit different here we have the position vector okay r with respect to time and uh, um, uh, you have to make use of it okay just give me uh, one minute i will connect the charger uh, in the meantime um, you can solve this question Okay, uh, try to solve this question. We, we got the value of R bar here. Uh, velocity is not given, but R bar is given, so you should be able to calculate the V bar. Right? And uh, you can also calculate the A bar acceleration. The position vector R bar is given like this. Mm -hmm. What is R bar? Pi T I plus 3t square j plus t cube by 3k okay <coughs> v bar is the dr bar by dt right uh, differentiation of r bar with respect to t phi ti so it's a phi ui plus uh, 6j plus t square k 60j sorry yeah and uh, velocity at t is equal to 2 will be equal to phi ui plus 6 uh, 12 j plus 4k okay and uh, mod of v bar is under root of 5 square plus 12 square plus 4 square and that will be equal to 13.60 meters per second Okay, and uh, similarly, the acceleration uh, uh, Surujana, no, uh, fifteen point eighty five is not the correct one. <coughs> mm, a bar is again differentiation of v bar with respect to time that is 6j plus 2tk and again a bar at t is equal to 2 will be equal to 6j plus 4k and mod of a bar is equal to under root of 36 plus 16 under root of 52 and that is 7.21 meters per second okay uh yep yeah. so what what is expected here radius of curvature 
radius of curvature you know uh, the only way to find it is v square by n last time we have calculated if you know the value of an we can calculate the radius of curvature you already got the value of v what is v 13.60 whole square divided by an so only thing you have to calculate is an now how to calculate an that is the question you got the value of a but you don't know the an okay what is the value of a 7.21 7.21 is the a so a square is equal to tangential velocity acceleration square plus normal acceleration square right so 7.21 whole square is equal to 80 square plus a n square so at least if you get the value of 80 then you can get the value of a n okay how will you calculate 80 anyone can i say 80 is equal to a bar times um let's say uh, v cap a bar dot v cap is it correct what is v cap unit direct unit vector in the direction of the velocity right this should this should be the correct way to yes acceleration in the direction of velocity so that is a bar dot v cap and uh, what is a bar 6j plus 4k and v cap is what 5i plus 12j plus 4k Uh, divided by mod of v bar that is 13.6 so 1 upon 13.6 into uh, 0 plus 72 plus 16 should be 88 divided by 13.6 and how much uh, something 6.4 um, or maybe here yeah meters per second okay take it one take this one 80 okay for 6.47 okay um yeah 4.67 now um you got the 80 and you know how to calculate n now uh, 7.21 whole square is equal to 6.47 whole square plus a n square what is value of a n three point something no it should not be big abhishek uh, okay you are telling me the value of r r looks incorrect uh that is a n is 3.18 yes meter per second square so if you got the a e, 13.60 whole square divided by 3.18 should be 58 something, right? Check it. Yeah, 56. 58, right? 58 is the correct answer in this case. <coughs> Anyone have any doubt in this question? Here also we use a little bit of concept of vector calculus. Uh, we know the if you can if you calculate if you want to calculate the component of some vector uh, in let's say component of acceleration in tangential direction, then it will be at and that will be equal to uh, the acceleration into the dot product with the v cap okay and what is v cap it is the, the uh, velocity unit unit velocity vector okay and rest of the things are clear i hope and uh, the final answer in this case is 58 okay uh, so from this i have given just one question for homework uh, you can try it later if you are not able to solve then i can help you 
and uh, maybe from next week um, see what we'll do, do is um, um i will give some questions apart from class let's say okay uh, maybe in between some other day i will post um, some question on the group and uh, you come up with the answers um, uh, and then at least to make you active during the free time okay <coughs> see some syllabus is common there like which such as instantaneous center um, and uh, that should be covered in the theory of machines because whenever you study the um, topic let's say uh, uh, that topic um, mechanisms and machines um, the instantaneous center is um, should be covered okay but if not, maybe one just single question I'll take on it so that you'll get idea what I'm talking about. Okay. Let's take a one question. A ladder. Shown in the figure. So this question is not mainly from mechanics, I would say it's from the Theory of machines. Um, <clears throat> slides over a smooth. Vertical and horizontal surface. At the instant. shown in the figure okay the velocity of point a on the ladder is 3 meters per second The velocity at point B is B is okay. So let me show you the figure. Okay, this is the ladder. Um, three meters. This is C is b this is four meter so ladder is five meter okay <coughs> yeah uh, so this is sliding down at a velocity of three meters per second is it clear no question so what they are uh, asking you to calculate is the velocity at point b so do you agree that if the ladder the surface is smooth the point a will come downwards and the b we should go here because there is no other way that a will go upward right so this um, uh, this problem you can consider to calculate the vb Okay, anyone got the answer? It's not a difficult question. <coughs> okay, I'll give one more minute to you to think on it.
So if you put a ladder, sir, the vertical and horizontal surface is smooth. It is clear that it will slide down. So he is coming down at a three meters per second. So what is the B point at uh, going away? What is the velocity of point B? Yes, 2.25 is the correct answer, Abhishek. See, what is assumption here is like, yeah, if you draw the dotted line. OK, uh, so it is like you can assume this as one single link. OK, and this link is rotating about this instantaneous center of rotation. OK, so if you draw the perpendicular to the velocities, wherever it cuts, so this is the point, so you can call it as IAB, that is instantaneous center of uh, points A and B. What is instantaneous center? The center. with respect to which uh, whole body is assumed to be rotated. Assumed to be fixed axis rotating. or assumed to be undergoing fixed axis rotation, you can say, OK? At the given instant of time. Okay. Because after some times, the B point will be at different location, A will be at different location. So there will be different instantaneous of center of rotation, OK? So at this particular instant this is the instantaneous center because <clears throat> if, if you draw the perpendicular to the velocity uh, that is where it meets i a b and uh, that is instantaneous center of rotation okay i see you can see so uh, let's say it is rotating at omega so you can assume this entire as one link rotating at uh, omega angular velocity so what is velocity of the point b you know, velocity of the point B is given by R omega, right? So that is distance from, let's call it as this point as O, OB, okay? The distance OB into omega, okay? Omega, and that will be the velocity of um, point B. What is velocity of point A? That is three meter per second and that is equal to OA into omega. So OA value is four. So the omega value which you'll get is three by four. Okay. So if you put omega here, OB is what? OB is three, three into three by four. That is equal to nine by four. And what is that value? 2.25 okay so that is why 2.25 is the correct answer in this case okay this is just for your information yeah yeah I would say this is for not part of mechanics uh, because here we are talking about the links, the uh, angular velocity of the eye centers and all, and it should it comes in the theory of machines. So, um, but this is just for your information, like um, uh, 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 how to deal with this kind of questions. Sanjeev, what relations you are talking about? Okay. <clears throat> yes, you can do that, Sanjeev. Yes. Uh, yeah, that should also give you the same answer. 
uh, because this is let's say you can assume it as um, the rigid rod and along the uh, direction of the rigid rigid uh, rod the velocity will be same uh, yes it should also give you the same answer uh, are you using the same uh, method sanjeev you got the same answer Yes, yes, yeah, that, yeah, that, that is what Sanjeev is also explaining. So what you can do is, the another way to solve this is uh, um, take the component of A, okay, um, along this, and also the component of B along this, okay, and uh, then you will get the same same answer, okay. Um, so that also is the correct. Method. What only thing you have to do is the you have to calculate the angles. Uh, so this is three, four. You have to you may have to calculate this angle. Tan of uh, tan inverse of three by four. You'll get some angle here. <coughs> you'll also get some angle here. That will be ninety minus that. Okay. And then take a component of the um, let's say velocities along this uh, along this line, and uh, you can. Um, uh, let's say equate it rather okay yeah uh, and whatever will be the answer uh, that that you will get the vb basically from it okay <clears throat> so yeah that is also correct method um okay abhishek has got the uh, angles here this is 37 and this is 53 okay um yeah and this this is already 90 so you take a component of that and equate it in that way also you should get the 2.25 so that method is also correct yes sanjeev you are right you can use that okay yeah but here i just wanted to introduce like this is this kind of problems are still there like um but Mainly, I would say um, it is not on the scope of uh, the uh, mechanics. Okay, uh, so you don't have to worry. Yeah, and about the eye centers, uh, it, it is I would say mainly for mechanical students, and uh, you will learn it in detail when theory of machines um, will start. Okay because uh, this is one of the very most important method to calculate the <coughs> velocity of link uh, whenever it comes to a mechanism okay fine so <coughs> as of now that's all i have for the kinematics um, part just to recall what we have studied in the kinematics is um, uh, we studied a variety of problems and uh, theoretical part a little bit because there is not much uh, in kinematics we only have um, velocity acceleration and displacement nothing else and uh, we are learning this from class eight okay but here what we um, understood in detail is like if it is a variable acceleration problem we have to work with differentiation and integration in order to solve it also um, whenever uh, let's say we have uh, constant acceleration problem we have to use equations of the motion and uh, uh, then the projectile motion related problems right um, how to find the velocity after a certain time how to find the range h max uh, time when we reach the maximum height and the t range we have studied the derivations of all of this including the equations of the motion and studied a lot of problems okay uh, so that's all we have from the kinetic kinematics part and uh, I'll now start the kinetics part.
Okay, we have some comments here from Abhishek and Sanju. Uh, question banks. Okay. Um, <clears throat> yes, uh, uh, I will share it. Okay. Um, but uh, but see, what I can do is I can in class if I just give you question, it will take like uh, half of the time just giving you the sample questions. So one or two questions I can give in the class. The rest we are solving anyway. And uh, apart from class now, what I'll give in directly, I'll post it in the group now. Okay, Abhishek and Sanjay, you can um, uh, maybe from um, next week, uh, Monday or Tuesday, I will collect some questions and uh, I'll post it in the group and then you uh, take it. Okay, in class, um, I'll not give much questions for homework. I'll just give two questions more or less in the each class, but more questions I'll give um in whatsapp group okay yes yes uh, yeah practice is very important and uh, we will we will uh, do it through whatsapp group okay also after the completion of syllabus i'll take again some questions uh, starting from the beginning okay just to make you familiar with uh, little more questions and uh, just as a revision of what we have studied. So we'll have again a doubt clearing session and proper problem solving session at then. But for regular practice, I will um, send you questions through our WhatsApp group. Yeah, okay. Uh, write down heading kinetics. What is kinetics? As you know, uh, kinetics is like um, branch of um, the dynamics that deals with the study of the motion of the body, considering the forces applied on it. Okay, for forces causing the motion. Now, as I said previously, when I was uh, giving you the overall insight about this topic, that in this topic we will our main focus is in studying the um, different theorems, okay, or principles. So, let's say this body is there, uh, which is moving on a horizontal surface because of certain force P applied on it, okay. The weight of the body is W, which is acting in downward direction. The uh, normal reaction will be still there, that is N. But um, let some friction force is there, or let's say it's a frictionless surface, smooth surface, so no friction force. So can I apply the equations of the equilibrium in this case? Can I apply the equations of the equilibrium? Can I say, uh, let's say, summation of all y, summation of all forces in y direction, summation of all forces in x direction is zero. Can I do it? Hello? No, right, because we, sh we cannot do it. Um, <coughs> Because body is not in equilibrium. Then, how to solve this kind of problem? It be becomes a little bit difficult right now uh, because the body is not in equilibrium. Because this is our direction of motion. Okay. And our body is in acceleration in this direction. Okay. Uh, so, you know force is equal to mass times acceleration force is equal to mass times acceleration so if you apply let's say one imaginary force ma in this direction okay let's call it as a inertia force or 
or let's say an imaginary force which is an imaginary force okay such that the summation of all forces acting on the body in the horizontal direction is equal to the mass times acceleration okay so i can say summation of all fx minus ma equal to 0 and uh, let's assume this as a dynamic equilibrium equation let's call it as a dynamic equilibrium equation okay so that is what uh, we are doing here the way we are applying the equation of equilibrium in the dynamics is by assuming the imaginary force in the opposite direction of the motion and that is equal to the sum of all the forces in the um, moving direction in the direction of motion okay and that is what is described by a dl Lambert's principle so write down heading dl Lambert's principle Okay, drawing free body diagram. Drawing free body diagram and representing all the forces. And representing all the forces, including the inertial force. Okay, uh, that is mass time acceleration. <coughs> Helps in forming an equilibrium condition. Helps in forming an equilibrium condition. And uh, is represented as D. Lambert's principle. Okay. So, yeah, yes, Abhishek, summation of y we can anyway do because uh, the body is not moving in the y direction. Um, so, weight is equal to the normal reaction, you can say. Okay, uh, suppose um, friction is acting, then in the previous example, P is acting in rightward direction minus mu times n is the force which is in the leftward direction that is frictional force you can say so p minus f minus ma is equal to zero so p minus f is equal to mass times acceleration so what is mass that is weight of the body into acceleration divided by g okay so in this way also you can derive this equation okay so let me just draw here the um f frictional force fr okay <clears throat> is it clear till this so you understood what we are doing in the Lambert's principle. Can you tell me like uh, in which situation you will use the DL Lambert principle or uh, in what kind of problems you can use basically? inertial um, uh, so yeah I would say like the in the dynamic problems where you are let's say maybe acceleration is given or it's supposed to be calculated under such situation you can go for <coughs> under such situation you can go for the Lambert's principle okay <coughs> sorry mm. 
because we have an acceleration term here in the formula of the inertia okay in that in the inertial force this is mass time acceleration so mass of the body is given and the acceleration is given then you can use it or acceleration is supposed to be calculated then also you can use it okay so let me give you uh, some questions from this d'alembert's principle a block of weight 2224 newton is resting on a rough horizontal surface resting on a rough horizontal surface having coefficient of kinetic friction mu k okay mu k is now different it's not the mu which we were studying before mu k is coefficient of kinetic friction because body is moving point to the value of p as shown in figure that will give the body uh, acceleration of zero point two times G. G means nine point eight one, okay, meter per second square. Okay, a block of weight 2224 Newton is resting on a rough horizontal surface having coefficient of kinem kinetic friction. I already uh, explained to you when we studied friction, there are two types of friction, static and dynamic. You can also call it as kinetic. And the theoretical background and all I have already given to you. So I'll not go into that details. So just this is the force P which is acting at an um, angle of um, three and this is four. Okay. Yep. All this. Yeah, uh, eight, eight, nine may be correct if it is a horizontal force, um, Abhishek. Uh, yeah, it should be. Um, let me just calculate it. Yeah, 889 is for the horizontal force P. Here, a little bit different. Um, your answer may be more than that because we want now 889 Newton horizontal component. If we want that horizontal component to be 889, then the actual force at this angle should be a bit more than that, right? Uh, 
<coughs> yes anyone have solved it <coughs> no pranjul 889 is um, is is correct answer for this kind of figure okay for this 889 is correct for this the answer is 966.95 newton okay <clears throat> let me explain you uh, so this is p this will be point eight times p and this will be point six times p okay uh, so the weight will be acting downward normal reaction will be acting upward frictional force will be here mu times n also the mass time acceleration that is the Lambert's force or you can also call it as the inertial force will be acting in leftward directions okay so if you apply summation of all vertical forces equal to zero because now we because of this inertial force the body is in um, dynamic equilibrium and uh, summation of all vertical forces equal to zero so n plus 0.6 times p is equal to 2224 right so this implies the value of n is 2224 minus 0 0.6 times p call it as equation number one summation of all forces in the horizontal direction equal to zero if you use that px that is 0 0.8 times p minus mu times n so 0 0.2 times n is what we have we just have calculated 2224 minus 6p minus 0 0.6p mu n equal to <coughs> um, sorry minus ma mass times acceleration so 2224 into 0 0.2 into g and this is a weight so you should again divide by g and that is equal to zero so zz will get cancelled so 0 0.8p minus 0 0.2 times 2 to 4 minus point, uh, point 0.6p uh minus 2 to 2 4 into point 0.2 if you solve it further um i think you should get p as 966.95 okay just check it okay and in this in in the second example if in this kind of question if they ask it's very simple here uh, p will be equal to uh, what is p will be equal to the frictional force that is mu times n so that will be 0.2 times n will be in 2 to 4 plus the mass times acceleration that is 2 to 2 4 into 0.2 into g by g gg will get cancelled so 2 to 2 4 into 0 0.2 into 2 that's all okay and that is 889.6 okay so if Okay, clear. 966.95 is the correct answer. Some of you already solved it. Okay, let me give you one more question. Yeah, because as uh, we have very less time, let's take one more question and we'll complete it. Two equal weights. The 
W and a single weight Q. You attached two ends of a As to two ends of a flexible but in uh, extensible cord. Full stop. Overhanging pulley. Overhanging the pulley shown in. figures okay if the system moves with the acceleration a as indicated by arrow Neglecting air resistance, inertia of the pulley, pulley and friction from the magnitude. of weight Q will be okay. and options are option A Q is equal to 2 W A divided by G minus A option B W A divided by 2 times G minus A option C W A divided by G minus A and option D WH divided by G minus 2A. <clears throat> okay. It's an inextensible, not extensible. Look, you can say. Okay, it will not uh, extend. We are studying mechanics, so it, is, it will not extend. Okay. <laughs> because we are not considering any deformation and all in our study. Figure looks something like this. This is the weight. This is another weight. And this is the Q. And this is the acceleration E. Okay. <clears throat> I'll repeat the question. Two equal weights W and a single weight Q are attached to an flexible but inextensible cord overhanging the pulley shown in the figure. If the system moves with an acceleration as indicated by arrow, neglecting the air resistance, inertia, and the friction of the pulley, the magnitude of weight Q will be. What is the value of Q? Okay, this is previous year question, one of the previous year question. Okay, let me help you out. Let's try with the free board diagram of uh, first body. Uh, the downward weight is W and T is the tension in the string. As you know that this weight is moving in this direction. The motion is in this direction. Okay. This is the direction of motion. 
So in order to apply the equation of equilibrium or in order to make a dynamic equilibrium case, then inertia force of mass time acceleration has to be applied in downward direction. Mass time acceleration means W divided by G into A. Okay. So I can say here T is equal to W plus W A by G. And you can in short write it as W times one plus A by G. Okay, so this is the um, let's say tension in the string. Yes, Abhishek, he option A is correct in this case. Then apply the free board, uh, the same strategy to the free board diagram of second figure. So let's consider this as a second figure overall. We have, let's say, W plus Q acting downward. So tension will be there. And this body is moving in this direction. So this is a direction of motion. So this will be the mass times acceleration. That is inertia force. OK and whose value is mass time acceleration that is w times q divided by g times a okay so you can say here tension in the string plus w plus q times a by g is equal to w plus q tension in the string we have just calculated in the previous slide that is w times 1 plus a by g if you put here in the second equation, what ultimately you will get here is W times 1 plus A by G is equal to W plus uh, and just multiply this A by G inside what you will get W A by G and from there take W here and q stuff will keep it that side so q minus q a by g okay so i have taken all w terms on the left side and q terms on the right hand side you take q common here one plus one minus a by g you will get okay uh, So from here, um, so this is W plus W A by G. Plus W A by G minus W. So here plus W minus W will get cancelled. 2 W A by G is equal to Q times G minus A by G. So this gg will get cancelled q equal to 2 wa divided by g minus a okay hence option a is correct in this case <coughs> okay are you following so dl Ambert's principle very very simple body is not in equilibrium because it's in motion and uh, in order to apply the equations of the equilibrium we have to generate or artificially correct create a situation of uh, it by considering an imaginary force uh, which you can call it as inertia force uh, applied in the direction to the opposite of the motion and the magnitude will be equal to sum of all the forces in the direction of motion okay um, and that will help you to con use the equations of the equilibrium and solve the problem uh, is it clear till this? Any doubt? Is it clear the DL Lambert's principle? Any doubt till this? Okay. So if no doubts, then in the upcoming sessions, we'll solve some more problems. Uh, I'll give this week, I'll give some questions to you uh, on the WhatsApp. You solve them, okay? 
and we also have to study uh, work energy principle apart from this um, then we also have to study impulse momentum principle uh, in this okay um, and uh, problems on it and yeah so and once that is done then we'll study the remaining topic of virtual work at the end okay so um, uh, in the next class our focus is mainly on studying the theorems okay and solving the problems so that uh, this concept of let's say impulse momentum principle work energy principle dl lambert principle is clear and uh, once it is clear uh, then we'll study the remaining topic of virtual work and the problems on it okay and that's how we'll proceed in the in this week okay any doubt till this uh, if no doubt then we can close the session thank you all for joining this class and let's meet again uh, next week Thank you all. Bye. I'll upload all these uh, um, slides to the dry location, okay, um, in the PDF format. So, thank you all. Good night. Bye. Uh, no, Sanjeev, uh, WhatsApp group, um, um, we are advised to share it through the dry location only. Um, so I think it's better to use it. Uh, I will uh, upload in what uh, dry location. If you don't have the dry location, I can share it with you through WhatsApp. Okay. Yeah, I'll share the uh, die location to you. Yeah, uh, that's all then. Thank you. Bye.